John Cataldo has been fishing in Cook Strait for 35 years. Cook Strait is 25 kilometers wide. It separates the North and South Islands of New Zealand, and it's one of the most dangerous stretches of water in the world. John Cataldo knows it well, and yet every day this water is a challenge, as it has been for many others. He's acted as pilot for swimmers in 15 attempts to cross Cook Strait. Only four were successful. In addition, he's accompanied two kayaks, two canoes, and one surf ski. For all who attempt the strait, the dangers are manifold. Unpredictable conditions, conflicting tides and currents, fatigue, and the constant possibility of hypothermia, the loss of body heat that means mental distress and physical exhaustion. It's the unpredictability of Cook Strait that concerns John Cataldo. When the wind turns to the south, he can have a storm on his hands in 15 minutes. He remembers the first surf boat race he piloted across the strait. Seven boats started in flat, perfect conditions, with a light nor'westerly predicted. Two-thirds of the way across, and they were hit by an 82-knot gale. Three of the surf boats swamped. The other four made it, but under extremely hazardous conditions. Today, Cataldo has three new challenges for Cook Strait. Susie Gibb, Grant Beck, and Chris Wiley. They want to be first across on windsurf boards. OK, how about getting them on the water, eh? Yeah. Giving it a go. Well, Mr Cataldo, we should both be on our weather forecast to come through, shouldn't we? Cataldo is dubious about their chances of success. He's only consented to act as pilot for them out of concern for their safety. They plan to go ahead whether he came or not. Right. We're going to be going awfully fast. Yeah, we're going to be Well, the forecast was for moderate northerly, but I think it's going to be a bit more than moderate. <coughs> so, do you want to have a run? Yeah, buddy. Okay, Let's go to it.
John Cataldo's greatest fear on Cook Strait is sharks. If the weather gets too cold or the wind too strong, he can take them out of the water. He can control these things, but he can't control the sharks. You're about a third of the way across now, so just keep going. He remembers three summers ago, the worst year for sharks in Cook Strait for 30 years. And they were big sharks, up to 20 feet long. They were hungry too. They bit the floats on his fishing lines in their hunger. So when the windsurfers become separated, John Cataldo is worried. One of them, Chris, is perhaps five or six kilometers behind the other two. The more he falls behind, the stronger the tides he has to contend with. He is tiring quickly and is falling more frequently. Cataldo's reluctance to take the three across was due to the wind factor. These craft are propelled by wind, and the more wind you get, the rougher the sea. He crosses his fingers. The wind seems to be staying moderate. Still, he's amazed at their speed. His boat does nine knots. It's often not enough to keep up. Keep heading for the highest point, will you, the tide's changing. speaks to the other support boat. Chris is still struggling on, but is further behind. Grant and Susie, however, are only half a kilometre away from the other side. If they can make it before the tide changes, the strait will have been beaten once more. Uh, this is quite pleasant here, compared to what we've been through. So just keep his spirits up and keep him going, over.
finds it hard to keep his balance because he hasn't got the he's got the slop and chop and no wind, you see. You've done a good job there. to do it again, that's for sure. <laughs> away from Lynn, where Lynn Cox landed on her swim. About 40 yards away, that's the point, just over there, uh, the rock where Lynn landed. Yeah. I didn't think I'd be here two years later doing the same thing, or a similar thing. No injuries after a gallant attempt like that. You deserve a medal. surprised. Susie and Grant have crossed Cook Strait in two hours twenty, and Chris as well, two hours later. The challenge has been met.